you know, one of the negative aspects of religion that we don't talk enough about is the way it tricks dumbasses like Aaron Rodgers into thinking that they're smart. Let me back up just in case you and I move in radically different news circles. Aaron Rodgers is the superstar quarterback for the Green Bay Packers, and until the week before last or so, he was one of the most popular athletes in all of America. And part of his appeal was that he came off as a really intelligent guy. He challenged the stereotype that said athletes had to be idiots. Hell, the dude even guest hosted Jeopardy at one point. And then the facade of intellect all came crumbling down last week when he started quoting Joe Rogan in defense of his anti-vax bullshit. See, turns out he was lying to his team about being vaccinated. He wasn't so sure about all them chemicals and the whatnots that they put in them vaccines. So instead, he took a regimen of conspiracy theories and tinfoil hat pharmaceuticals and figured that was pretty much the same as being vaccinated. So he lied. And in so doing, he put his teammates, his team staff, the opposing teams, his fans and all of their families at risk. And when the inevitable avalanche of bad press followed, he went on a radio show and spouted right-wing catchphrases about how he was being canceled by the woke mob. Of course, this is relevant to us because Rogers is an atheist. Or, I mean, he's, he's one of them people who doesn't believe in God but doesn't have the guts to embrace it with that word or whatever. But he's had a few, like, choice quotes in his career where it makes it clear that he rejects religion. And that convinced a lot of us to embrace him as one of our own. Hell, it likely contributed to the illusion of intelligence as well. Now, to be clear, Aaron Rodgers is probably a pretty smart guy. Okay, he's certainly no genius. That would be literally impossible to say the dumb shit that he said in that interview if he was. But he's also no idiot. In a weird way, though, even in atheism, he's a victim of religious bullshit. See, at some point, his intelligence led him to question the popular narrative about God and the afterlife. He doubted it. He probably researched it. He realized it was very clearly nonsense. He rejected it. And that's good, right? That's, that's how smart is supposed to work. But at the same time, it reinforced the dangerous idea that truth is found by rejecting expertise. Of course, the correct lesson to take away from this is that expertise is meaningless if you're an expert in bullshit. But Perversely, it often has the exact opposite effect on people. Bullshit experts like, you know, alternative medicine practitioners and conspiracy theorists will often use the religious lie to back up their claim. Right. It's it's living, breathing proof, after all, that the experts can all be wrong on something. And if it can happen to priests and theologians, why couldn't it also happen to doctors and scientists? Think about how much of the conspiracy theory worldview is propped up by this. A person rejects religion, tosses out what the experts have been telling them their whole life, and suddenly everything adds up. Questions that bug them forever start to fall away, and shit makes sense in a way it never did before. Things that seemed impossible turned out to just be impossible and wrong. And then at that point, it's really easy to start asking yourself, okay, what else are the so-called experts lying to me about? After all, quantum physics doesn't make any more sense than the nature of the soul. The Big Bang is just as baffling as the Trinity. When that happened with religion, it turned out the real answer was simple. And would you look at that? This guy over here has a really simple answer for all the aspects of science that baffle me as well. But there's more. Because at the same time that religion is providing this universal example of the fallibility of experts, it's also reinforcing this paradoxical idea that certainty is an intellectual impediment. After all, nobody's as certain as religious people. Nobody believes their thing harder than a zealot, or at least nobody will vocally claim that they believe it in the desperate, unsolicited way that religious people will proclaim it. But, but, but that's indistinguishable from certainty if you're not cynical enough. So when the Aaron Rodgers of the world start asking themselves why so many people are fooled by religion, it's perfectly logical to conclude that their big problem was their certainty. That might even be right. But it's not a problem with certainty. It's a problem with religion. Now, granted, certainty can serve as a fantastic barrier to knowledge. That's hardly exclusive to the domain of religion. But at the same time, uncertainty can be every bit as much of a barrier. Some people are certain because they're pig-headed or incurious or indoctrinated. But other people are certain because they're fucking experts. Rejecting my Aunt Kathy's certainty that gay people are going to burn in hell and rejecting the FDA's conclusion of the effectiveness of a vaccine are not equivalent propositions. 
right? Like, e- even if they both express equal levels of certainty. Look, Aaron Rodgers can go fuck himself with this cowardly and selfish bullshit. I- I'm not trying to make excuses for him, but we're all victimized to one degree or another by our culture's quixotic need to pander to religion. Look, e- even if it's only when the dumbasses around us refuse to get fucking vaccinated because of it. Look, when we as a culture afford religion legitimacy, we do so at the expense of legitimacy itself because religion is so goddamn wrong that it makes the very concept of right suspect.